Hello, my name is Rich Finelli, and I'm a front-end developer, and I've been building stuff for the internet for the last six years. We're here to master CSS, the incredible presentation language of the web. I'm going to help you build modern, responsive, and beautiful websites at an advanced level using CSS. In this first section, CSS Foundations, we're going to take a look at the course as a whole, as well as go over the fundamental concepts necessary to master CSS. The first video is an overview of the entire course. We're going to go over what we're going to learn in this course, expectations of you and your skill set. We'll also preview the site we're going to build and look at some of the tools I'm using in my workflow. CSS is the presentation language of the web. It describes things like the colors, fonts, and layout of your pages. As cascading style sheets, along with HTML and JavaScript, are the three core languages of the web, the more you know about all three of them, the better off you'll be. There are some basic prerequisites. I expect that you understand how to write HTML and understand basic CSS, like styling fonts, adding margins, padding, and background colors, and other stuff like what a hexadecimal color code is. In the next two videos, however, I'll be covering some of the basic concept review, like the box model, display properties, and types of style sheets. Also, throughout this video course, I'll touch on a small amount of JavaScript and jQuery. You don't need any prior knowledge of these, but you will be getting a taste of it in this course. So let's take a look at the final site we're going to build. In order to learn CSS, we're going to finish building this HTML5 website, which is all about sharks. I use the word finish building this site because the basic HTML and CSS will already be in place. We'll be adding all of the things I'm about to show you, plus more. The site features modular and reusable CSS, which we'll learn about. It has floats for layout. The navigation features a drop-down menu that uses CSS animations, a call to action button with a CSS gradient, we're using web fonts, and it's fully responsive. So if I resize the browser, you can see that our two-column layout shifts to a one-column layout, and our menu here turns into a menu designed for mobile. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see we have ghost buttons that use CSS transitions. It's ready for high DPI devices like Apple's Retina displays. Most of the imagery on the site uses SVG. At the very bottom here, we have an icon font. So we're gonna learn about some really cool stuff during this course. You'll also notice I'm using Chrome as my browser. And we'll be using this browser most of the time. I like Chrome because of its dev tools, among other things. We'll use this to explore the code directly in the browser. There's a video on the Chrome dev tools in section two that will help us troubleshoot when our CSS isn't working the way we want it to. Some of the other things I'm using, if I minimize some windows here, you'll notice I'm using a Mac. If you're a Windows user, at any time I refer to the command key, you should pretend like I was referring to the control key. Other than that, I don't think that will be an issue. My text editor is a great lightweight product called Sublime Text 3. In section two, ramping up, the first video is on Sublime and explains why I like it so much. And more than that, it explains how a good text editor will make you a better developer. Sublime isn't the only good one out there, I should say. There's others like Adam Brackett's Code of Vim, Visual Studio, Edge Code, that do many of the same things, but in this video course, I'll be using Sublime Text. So even though this course is on mastering CSS, we can't do much with CSS without HTML, so we'll be working in HTML quite a bit. The goal is very clean semantic HTML. That's what we want to shoot for, and we'll be working in HTML often. So lastly, I have a disclaimer. We're going to learn about the best practices in web development as of mid-2015 when this video course was created. In the web design world, though, things change often. For instance, one example in the past, tables were the technique of choice to lay out a multi-column web page. Today, using a table for layout is definitely not what you want to do. Floats are the most common way to create a layout now and will be what we learn about. But in a year, or maybe five years, that will all change. CSS is progressing with new layout modules that are designed to supplant floats for laying out a page. Flexbox, grid layout, 
and CSS regions may be the wave of the future, probably will be. Since things rapidly evolve in the world of front-end web development, our key takeaway is that we can't stop learning CSS. In general, once you stop learning, you'll be very outdated very quickly. My intent, however, is to teach the concepts and techniques that will benefit you for a long time. In this video, we talked about how CSS is the presentation language of the web and really makes your website look like a website. It also talked about how you should be familiar with basic HTML and CSS. We also previewed the final site and took a look at some of the tools I'm using. So I hope that prepares you a little for what's to come. In the remaining two videos in this first section, we'll be reviewing core concepts that are fundamental to web design and CSS. In the upcoming video, we'll start by reviewing how to create the most fundamental thing in CSS, the rule set, and the different places we write those rule sets.